Story 33. My wife's racist mother is glad she had a miscarriage. Content warning. This video deals with racism and its effect on marriage. It should only be viewed if you are okay with the content. I, 26M, met my wife, 25F, while in college, and we dated for a few years before I asked her to marry me. She was ecstatic and cried in joy when I asked her. Our marriage was intense, loving, and exciting as we were still young and explored our world together. My wife, whom we'll call L, was of African-American descent, had dark, flawless skin, a thin athletic figure, and was slightly shorter than I was at 5'10". I'm about as white as you can get, with my ancestry being of Northern European descent. Our relationship and marriage was amazing until the second year. L got pregnant and had a miscarriage about five months in. It was pretty traumatic for both of us with the loss of the baby and L's time in the hospital. We spent long walks holding each other, working through the sadness. L decided to go to her parents' house for a week and be at home with her mom to help her mentally deal with what had happened. L said that her mom had two miscarriages when she was younger and felt she could connect with her on how to deal with the depression. I was all for the visit even though I didn't feel like L's mom liked me. She was always reserved and somewhat distant, yet polite. L's father was the opposite, being very friendly and welcoming, routinely asking me to hang out with him and even helping him with his hobby of stone polishing. He would acquire semi-rare stones, cut them into pieces, expose the stunning interiors of the stone, and then, using a lot of polishing equipment, make them into some amazing works of art that he sold for a nice profit as a hobby. I accompanied L but gave her space to be with her mom so they could work through the pain together that L was living with. The first couple of days seemed to go well, and L's spirits improved a bit being home with her parents' love. On the third day L and her mom went out together and spent the day doing mother and daughter stuff away from the house. When they got home, there was a strange vibe coming from L and her mom. But I dismissed it and asked her how she was feeling. She smiled and said everything was fine and we'd talk after eating. L and her mom went into the kitchen and started preparing dinner. This left L's father and I time to work on his stone polishing hobby, so we went into the basement and started working away. Ella's dad noticed he was running out of a specific type of polish he wanted for a geode he was working on, and asked me if I wanted to go with him to get some before the ladies were finished with dinner. Of course, I agreed, and we headed up to leave. It was cold outside, and it was just starting to get dark. As I sat on the bench putting on my shoes, Elle's dad stopped talking and looked toward the kitchen. I looked up, wondering what he was looking at, and realized that Elle and her mom were discussing me. This had caught her father's attention, and he had a strange look. I finished tying my first shoe just in time to hear Elle's mom say something to the effect that it was a good thing that she had miscarried because she shouldn't be having kids with a white guy. I changed the language here since it was blatantly racist. I was stunned at the comment, but even more embarrassed, looking away like I hadn't heard what she said. Elle's dad took a step towards the kitchen when her mom went on a rant about how disappointed she was that her daughter would sink so low as to let some white guy between her legs. Then she asked Elle when she was going to dump me for a real man, and she said there were a lot of those she could land. Elle's dad stopped in his tracks as his wife was saying this stuff and turned to look at me with really sad eyes. Elle's mom joked about me and how I wouldn't measure up to the competition. Her daughter needed to put me aside and grow up. L said, Okay, mama. I was still in shock with L's dad trying to hustle me out the door when L's mom said, Go get your friend so we can eat, then tell him that he should go home. L replied again with, Yes, mama. I had stood up and just stared at the opening to the kitchen with her dad gently saying he was sorry, trying to talk into my ear about how he didn't raise his daughter to be like this and apologizing for his wife. L walked out of the kitchen and froze, her eyes locked on mine. We stood there for an eternity, with her looking back and forth between me and her dad. The fact that Elle hadn't defended me with the things her mom was saying was crushing. Ella's mouth opened, and she started saying that dinner was almost ready when her dad interrupted her and said we know. We heard everything. He was mad, like angry mad, looking at his daughter. I said, You don't need to worry. I'll leave now and not interrupt your dinner. I walked to the bedroom and started packing the things I had taken out of my bag. It only took a few minutes, and I could hear L's dad tearing into his daughter and wife. When I returned to the front room, he was still screaming at them about what sort of people they were, and that he was ashamed of them. 
As I walked up, El's mom looked away in embarrassment. I looked at El and said I was leaving and would get a ride to the airport. It was a five-hour drive back to where we lived, so flying would be easier. I didn't want to strand El there, so I handed her the keys to my car and left. El and I rented a beautiful townhome in a nice area that I was negotiating to purchase. I just dropped my stuff on the floor and sat on the couch. It's funny just how fast time flies when you're preoccupied. I sat there until morning, just thinking about the last four years of my life with El. I had bouts of grief, and at times, I was angry, but by morning, I was just numb. I finally turned my phone back on, and as expected, it was saturated with text and voice messages from L and others. L must have said something to some of our friends because I had several texts from her friends. I didn't bother to read them. I decided to call my parents and had a really tough conversation with them. My mother was furious when I explained what happened. She had always loved Elle and was excited to see her every time they or we visited. I think the part that sent my mom over the edge was the callous comment by Elle's mother about the miscarriage being a good thing because the baby would be half white. She railed against Elle and her mom for the insensitive and racist comments and the fact they were horrible people. I got off the phone with my mom and went to take a shower. As I was getting some food, my phone lights up again with another call from Elle. I decided to take the call to see what she wanted. I answered the phone, and Elle was bawling. I just sat there listening to her cry until she calmed down enough that I could understand her. She was saying something about my mom, and I asked her to repeat what she said. She goes into how my mom called her, screaming at her and her mom for being racist pieces of crap. Mom said how dare she and her mom make comments about it being good the baby died because it was half white. She screamed at her telling her that I was there, and heard her and her mom discussing it. My mom then took to FB and went scorched earth on L and her mom for their actions, detailing what was said. Mom tagged everyone on her post so all of their friends and acquaintances would know what happened. I listened to L crying about how it was so unfair because she hadn't said anything and that her mom was saying it. After a few minutes, she stopped talking and asked me if I was still there. I asked her why she didn't defend me and then I asked her why she didn't defend our baby. I hung up the phone before she could answer. Elle showed up at our place that evening, and she was a wreck. I'm surprised she was able to make the drive home. Our FB was on fire with some of the nastiest things I've ever read on the internet. When Elle entered the door, she approached me and tried to hold me, but I told her no. She cried and begged me to give her a chance to talk, and I said no. I told her she would need to find a place to live since I was going to break the lease, pay the penalty and move out. Elle cried herself to sleep in our bed that night. As she slept, I packed, finishing by the time she woke up. I left her everything we had purchased while married, and she'd easily be able to set up a fully furnished home when she found a place. I only kept the personal items I entered the relationship with, except the stuff that we had purchased for the nursery. I had all the baby stuff, including the framed ultrasound picture that we had hung on the wall after the miscarriage with the name Ash written on it. We had chosen a name that would work for a boy or girl since we chose not to know the gender. When Elle saw the picture, I said since you didn't care about our baby living or dying, I thought I'd take this. Elle looked like I had punched her in the stomach. There was a lot more drama as she begged me not to leave. But ultimately, she made me mad. And I told her that my leaving the house was just the first step, and that she'd only be a signature away from being with one of her mom's real men. I left now that my car was there. I was still on PTO for a few days, but planned to move home. I was done with this life and wanted to be around my family. I left Elle standing in the parking lot, crying. I had her served with divorce papers a few weeks later. It would have been sooner, but it took me a week to drive back to the West Coast. I had to have her served at her parents' house. Her dad opened the door to a sheriff's deputy asking to see Elle. Her dad knew what was going on, so he called Elle to the door to be served. Her dad, Joe, was a great guy, and we kept in contact until he died of a heart attack in August 2018. A friend contacted me to let me know and give me the funeral information at Elle's request. I flew back for the funeral. I stayed to myself and didn't interact with the family, but they knew I was there. Elle was married again to someone her mom approved of, but Elle came to me and hugged me from the side, thanking me for being there for her dad. I didn't say anything to her. I just nodded and walked away. Maybe it was horrible of me. 
but I did get a sort of satisfaction that she was openly crying when I walked away from her. She followed after me, asking for me to please talk to her. I didn't say anything as I walked past her family. Elle's mom wouldn't look me in the eye as I passed. Elle's husband gave me a questioning look because Elle was being so emotional. Elle continued to follow me and broke down, screaming that she still loved me, begging me to talk to her. Her mom and her husband overheard everything. As I got to the rental car, my wife got out, holding our daughter Jess's hand. Jess was almost two and ran over to me to be picked up. They had come but didn't feel they should attend the service, opting to wait in the car. My wife looked at Elle with a cool glare as Elle stood about ten feet from the car like she'd run into a wall. She looked between me and my family with a sort of shocked realization. I finished walking to the car and put my daughter into her car seat. We drove off to Elle, sobbing, as her mom and husband stood there arguing behind her. I know Elle's mom was the real problem. The issue I couldn't live with was the fact that Elle had not rebuked her mom for the comments she made, especially the comment about the miscarriage and the death of our baby girl. I couldn't and wouldn't forgive her for not caring enough to defend us as a couple and our unborn child. I don't believe Elle was truly racist, since more than half of the people she considered friends were not African American. It's just sad that she didn't take the high road with confronting her mom. It's been almost five years since the funeral and I've never heard from Elle again. I did hear through friends that her mother passed of COVID in late 2020. I didn't feel it would be appropriate for me to reach out, so I didn't. As for me, my wife and I have another baby on the way. We are happy and healthy, and I can't imagine a better life. I only post new and unique content. Please like and subscribe.